own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Okay. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this Bible. Right? Right. Okay, watch this. In this last day, the mass high is raising up the two puppets of God. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. who took us in captivity, they're going to be on the bottom. Right. In other words, what goes around comes around. That's right. We all believe in karma, right? We believe what you put out, you get back, right? Yes. Yes. He's the son of God. We not, he's not the most high God, but like the scripture said, ye are gods. He is a God. God wanted today. He wanted it today. We can all be that's not gonna happen. Yeah, but that's not because that's not how it's supposed to be. No, it's not. It's God, but it's God who choose and make. But it's God who make believers and disbelievers. That's God's choice. If God wanted it today, all of us, all of us will be believers today. But He right. doesn't want that. But He chose. This is what this is what He did. He it's made eighteen. God, so listen, God He made eighteen made nations. And he, he made eighteen nations. Out of those eighteen nations, He selected one to be His chosen. Yeah. Out of those chosen. Now listen, listen, listen up, Adam. Listen up, Adam. Listen up, Adam. We don't even know what God made. Listen, listen. He been, he been, it's, we can only go by what we have in the book. In the book, he created 18 nations. Out of the 18, he chose one. Out of that one nation, okay, out of that one nation, he says two thirds of those people are going to follow after the ways of the heathen. They're going to follow after the white man, the Chinese man, the Arab man. All of They're going to follow the ways of that those nations and one third of them one third of them though is going to repent and come back to keeping his commandments that's right one third of them are going to hear these words and they're going to believe and they're going to go you know what i'm gonna go ahead and let my beard grow why because god said it right right i'm gonna let, i'm gonna go ahead and put those fringes on my clothes why because god said it right right i'm gonna go ahead and learn how to keep the sabbath day why because god said it right it's really that simple. That's repentance. Repentance is, I hear something in the Bible that I didn't know I was supposed to do, and I stopped doing my way, and I go, God said do that? Okay, I'm going to do it. It's just that simple. You got kids? No, I don't. Okay, you don't have kids. You got, you got parents. But when you're doing something wrong, you personally, yes. and you know that you're committing a sin, yes. you know it, don't you? Absolutely. But I, did, I, I didn't always know. Give me Romans 7 7. I didn't always, but I didn't always know. No, you don't. You Sometimes I know now because I've learned. But watch this. Watch what Paul said. Listen watch up. this, Adam. Watch this. Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. Oh, watch this. Last script. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. So Paul's answered the question. He said, Is the laws of God sin? He said, No, it's not. Go ahead. Nay, I have not known sin but by the law. So he said, I wouldn't have known sin but by the law. So sometimes you don't know you're doing something wrong until you learn the law that says you are or are not supposed to do it. You see what I'm saying? Okay, watch this, watch this. Sister, let me ask you a question. What's today? Saturday. Saturday. In the Bible, what's Saturday called? 
The seventh day. Today is the seventh day of the week, right? Sunday is the first week. Saturday is the seventh day. So what is the seventh day called in the Bible? Sabbath. What is it? Yeah. Sabbath. Did you know that? Understood? That's that's what I'm saying. So so we say when we're it's called the Sabbath. So we don't always know. So now, did you also know that on that seventh day, that day is separate from all the rest of the days of the week, and there are things that you're supposed to do and not do on that day that are different from all the seven days of the week? See, this is what I'm saying. She didn't know before we're great teacher, and now she'll know, so now she can decide to make the change. So you said, when we do something wrong, we know. The only thing you know is what you were taught. Okay? Meaning that you believe it's wrong to kill, right? Because we were grown, we grew up. Huh? You said we only know what we are taught? Yes. Yes. How can you know something that you were never taught? The only time, listen, listen, listen. The only time you were starting to get, the only time that you were starting to get true revelation and understanding that, that somebody didn't teach you. You say it again. Uh, you say you're saying that we are all in the 100%. The brother said, so, the brother said, so what I'm saying is, is that we're all, yes, I am saying that. I am saying that. So, the brother's saying that, what I'm saying is, we're all indoctrinated. Right. 100%. We are all indoctrinated. Right. Right. The indoctrination is, is that you're supposed to celebrate your birthday. The Bible said don't do that. Right. That's the highest form of idolatry. Right. That's right. You're putting yourself up as a god. Who wrote that Bible? Who wrote the Bible? <laughs> Holy men of God, that whose spirits were moved. Who? Okay, listen. I don't want to get off track. I'm gonna get that for you. If you hang around five minutes, I'm gonna answer that question for you. But I want to show the sister something real quick. So, like I was saying, we learned what? We learned birthdays. We learned Christmas, right? We learned that Je we learned that Jesus was a white man. Because it makes you feel uncomfortable doesn't mean it has to change. You know, I mean, yeah. Jesus was a white man too. We learned to celebrate Thanksgiving. We learned we, so it's not. And you say you believe in God. It's nothing. Right. It's nothing more important than understanding who you are in these scriptures and learning to do what God commanded. Watch this. Let me ask you this. What's the wages of sin? What is the wages of sin? I don't know, tell me. Give me that real quick. Give me Romans 6.23. The reason why there's nothing more important is because if you don't learn what this says, okay, and you go off and you do it your own way, there's a consequence for that. We're going to read it. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. So the payment, we know wages is a payment, right? When you go to work and you get a check, the check is called wages, right? So it says the wages for sin or the payment for sin is death. So if you go off and you do it your way and you don't take the time to learn God's way, the payment for that is death. The judgment is death. Okay? So it's, it's, it's vitally important. What could be more important than that? Give me Proverbs 72. Because this is the opposite of that. The wages of sin is death. So how do we get life? Give me that. Proverbs 72. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Keep my commandments and live. Keep God's commandments and live. That's how we get life. That's how we get eternal life. Is by keeping the commandments and the faith in his son Jesus Christ. That's how we get the kingdom of God. Absolutely. God makes life and takes life. You 100% correct. God takes life. Yeah. Takes life. Not us. God. No, it's God. If a brother, not if a, look, now we know it's a lot of what? What are oh. people doing out here? They're doing the fentanyl now, right? Yeah. If a brother do some fentanyl and he OD, okay, and, and is deceased, who took his life? He, but but who allowed that to happen? Who's in control of all the spirits? God. The most high. Give me that. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. You rebellious Adam, you gotta repent, bro. We out here for you. We out here. We love you, brother. Go ahead. See now that I, even I, I am he. Uh -huh. And there is no God with me. So the Most High God says, I am he. I'm the only one. He said, and there's no God with me. Okay, I'm doing this by myself. That's what God is saying. Go ahead. Don't leave, bro. Hang around for a few minutes. I kill. God said he does what? I kill. God said he kills. Uh-huh. 
I, I make alive. And he's the one that makes alive. I wound. He wounds. So when somebody get hurt, that's God. God said, I wound. And I heal. And he's the one that heals. So if you hurt and you need healing, you got to go to the most high. Because he's the one that's in control of that. Go ahead. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. He said, once God decides to judge you, there's nobody that can deliver you out of his hand. There's no way to escape. Hebrews 10, 31. There's no way to get away from that. Okay? So that's a fearful thing. Okay? That's a fearful thing. We should be afraid of that thing. That's why we're supposed to fear the most high God. Okay? Give me that. Hebrews 10, 31. Hebrews 10, 31. You got it? Great. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Meaning that it's a, it's a fearful thing when God decides, I've had enough of your shenanigans. I had enough of your crap. You know better. You should be doing better. I've had enough. I'm going to judge you now. It says once he decides to do that, it's nobody or nothing that can deliver you from that judgment. So why are you going to put yourself in that position? Right. Why not repent today while you still have time and come back to keeping God's commandments? That's right. Do y'all realize how short the time, Romans 13, 11. Do y'all realize that the time is short? Time Bring is running out. out. Right. right. We don't have a lot of time left. Question, sis, do you, see, do you watch the news at all? Are you on social media? Not really. No Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram, no, not really? Instagram. So you don't, okay, right now, do you know what's going on in California? You heard about the wildfires and all that that's going on? Have you heard about the earthquakes that's going on all, all over the place? Have you seen these, these crazy storms that just flooded Philadelphia, flooded New York, people dying, people getting drowned? Have you seen that? Do you realize that this is what the Bible says is going to happen at the end time? And it's going to, it's that people might say, oh, it's always been fires and floods. It says, no, but these things are going to happen. It's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. When have we ever had an earthquake in, in Maryland? Right. There was an earthquake in Maryland. That's right. That's not normal. That, it's, it's one thing we say, okay, it's an earthquake in California. Okay. But then when stuff starts shaking in, in Maryland, you're like, oh, wait a minute. But that's what we read in Matthew 24. And it says, this is the beginning of sorrows. Then it talks about after that, it says, then there's going to be pestilence on the earth. You know what pestilence is? That's diseases. Right now, brother, right? You see everybody walking around? You got a face mask on. Why? Because I'm going to get sick. Because we don't want the disease. That's the pestilence on the earth. That's how y'all did this time on. Okay? But no, we, we, we protect you. But that's another story. But... Right, right. You have to understand that these things are happening because they're pro that's the Bible prophecy coming to life. So now we'll prophet the prophet prophesy something else. And and the leadership has been prophesying it for the last two years, two to three years. Guess what comes after the pestilence? So you get the fires, you get the floods, you get the earthquakes, you get the tornadoes, you get the hurricanes. Then comes the pestilence, the diseases. What comes next? Who comes after that? Who reads the Bible? Famine. Famine. Y'all know what famine is? That means it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't enough food. That's what's coming next. Do you understand that's what's coming next? Have y'all realized who buys food? Who go grocery shopping? Did anybody buy them? So haven't you noticed the price of food going up? Yes. Global food prices have risen 40% over the last year. Now they get into the point they're about to start they're starting to be food shortages. Famine is coming. So if y'all have the means, stock up y'all pantries. Get y'all some dry goods, get y'all some canned goods, because it's coming. But more importantly, it's time to repent and keep God's commandments. That's right. Okay? The Lord on the way. Time short. Read. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Uh-huh. And that knowing the time. Because we know the time. Because we're reading this Bible every day. Go ahead. Knowing the time. That now it is high time. It's high time, meaning the time is right now to do what? To awake out of sleep. It's time for our people to wake up out of sleep. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark.
Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.